Hey, Blair. So I was messaging you on Vox, I think it was on Sunday, about this one. Uh, it's the 91-year-old lady that has 10 properties she's looking to sell. They're all those kind of, I don't know, between 30 and $90,000 properties, two bedroom, one bath, kind of 1940s, 50s, 60s houses. Older, seven of them are rented though, and they've had long-term tenants. Three of them definitely need quite a bit of work. Um, <clears throat> I guess a rough, so I, I tried to do what you were saying. She wants cash. I went back to them and asked and said, would you do some sort of owner financing? What are you going to do with all your equity? When it makes sense to make some interest on it, if you're just going to let it sit in the bank. She said, no, she just wants to move on and be done because she's 91 years old and doesn't want to have to deal with anything anymore. So I asked one more time and said, there's got to be some level of interest rate or down payment or combination of both that would make you happy to leave it in owner financing and they still just said nope they want to do just cash and get out of it so i'm gonna call with them later today to get the individual breakdown for each property like you said so then i guess just kind of the numbers the way it would work the seven that are rented the value i use prop stream i kind of spot checked it with a couple other zillow just recent comps so it they look pretty accurate uh, i'll do more detailed once i get a breakdown by property but it's around 370,000 total ARV for the, oh, I should have said the asking price is 230 for everything. The seven properties that are rented, they want only, or the ARV would be about 370 if you combine them all. And the rent of those 370 is about 3,400 current rent. And there's definitely room for the rents to be raised. Then of the other three that definitely need work, maybe would even be worked as wholesaling to get, if I had to do some sort of financing, wholesale those ones to get some cash back and pay down part of the financing. Those have ARVs of about 230 combined between all of them. But like I said, they need some work. One of them had a fire. So one of the rooms is destroyed. The other two are just very, very old and worn out. And then one of the seven properties, the person, one of the, the, the current tenants interested in owner financing and buying it. And they have money for a down payment. Now I haven't gotten into details of how much down payment, all of that. So I'm just wondering, they say they want to sell all 10 of them, but obviously they have to sell them individually. Is it worth sign everything up just to get everything going and then one by one close on the ones that actually make sense? I don't what, want to. What's the value, Jared, of all 10? What's the R of combining it all 10? Just give us one number. All 10, it's probably around 550. I'd say it's maybe a little high. It's probably closer to maybe 500. Yeah, well, that's a big difference. So let's say it's, it's been a little tough on the three that have no rent in it. They're very beat up and old, but I would yeah, forget if about I, if I just combined everything, it's five, you, five, seven. You, you have to buy this thing all cash. So you don't have another option. So, and mm -hmm. you got to buy them in a, you, you, this is where you're going to buy wholesale and sell retail. You'd buy all 10 and you sell them off one at a time. You can't lease option those out as a strategy unless you've got, you know, five, 600,000 cash sitting around your pocket doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to move quickly. Um, mm -hmm. You'll have to pay all cash and sell all cash. So for 500000 how much repairs do you think combined are needed on all the properties? 100000 the, the seven that are rented, for, for all of them, probably, yeah, 100000 The seven that are rented are very little. People have lived there for five, 10 years. You could probably do a little bit of cosmetic work, but none of them are complaining. None of them really need anything done. Now, the three that don't have tenants, Definitely would need, yeah, I mean, 100000 would probably be a rough estimate worth of work. So the max you can pay for all 10 is 200000 total. Okay. Based on, you know, these current formulas. Okay. Uh, and how much does she want for all 10? 230 You're pretty close. Okay. Yeah, you're not that far off. You're pretty close. That, that could be a decent deal, especially if your 500 is off. If it was 550 uh let's just run the numbers yeah you're you're dead nuts on exactly 230. so based on prop stream it's close to about 570 but i think a couple of them are a little high so that's why i'm guessing closer to maybe 500 <clears throat> to 530 range you, you that's a pretty good deal okay um, that's that could be a really good deal you could but buy those things and sign sell them an individual contract for each one still though your leverage isn't doing them all together you could do individual contracts. What I would do is I'd enter in a contract for the full 230 for all 10 of them with a clause that allows you to close them individually okay, on a prorated basis. 
would I use the same standard contract that you guys have, the purchase agreement one? Yeah. Okay. And you would just list all 10 properties in there and then? List all 10 and then say, you know, you're allowed to close them uh, separately on a prorated basis. So if all 10 of them for 230,000, it means for 23,000 a house, you can close each one. Okay. And then is that the way to, to and sell easiest them. way to do it? Just say twenty three thousand for each one, or would have them broken out individually priced? Or uh, yeah, I mean, you could, but just you can use the word prorated, which is the same thing without getting detailed. If you're dealing with an older seller, they they're looking for that two hundred thirty number, probably. That's what they're yep. looking for. Okay, yeah, so exactly that's what, what you're going to put on the contract. Um, and then, are these the kind of houses that? Um, you know, first time home buyers would like to live in? Um, probably, but I mean, it's a, it's a very small town. So you probably don't have a ton of new people moving there, buying the houses. It's like a 30,000 person town. And uh, how much does each one rent? You said what, four, what was the between, total? Between 400 and 600, but the total for the seven that are rented is 3,400 right now. Okay. There is room to raise rent, and the lady I've been working with said the tenants are aware that rent will probably need raised. I guess the old lady hasn't raised rent on them in 10 years. They've just been living there without any rent increase. I don't know if I necessarily go raise it 200 and scare them away, but there's definitely, and they understand there's, the rent will be raised a little bit. Yeah, you're probably looking at, let's say you got it up to 5,000 bucks. That's a heck of a rental, too. Um, yeah. This, this thing, you're, you're hitting all green lights, Jared, on yeah. both selling it for cash and then going out and getting a loan and keeping it as a rental property, this, and then okay. selling that. Um, you've got a ton of options on this deal. So just get it signed up as soon as I can, pretty much? Yeah. That's what I would do. It's a good one. Everybody should pay attention to this one. This one meets all the criteria for just about everything. I'm wondering, I don't want to push my luck. I don't think I would, but trying to get the number down even a little more, because they came down from originally 242 to 230 without me even asking. They right. said, if you're really interested, we'll be willing to do 230. I didn't even pressure them to come down yet. Yeah, uh, so I'd put the put the boots to them, try and get it at 200 or less, but even at 230, it's a good deal. Okay. What, All right. Well, I'm gonna, what state, what area is this in? It's in Texas. It's about an hour and a half southeast of <clears throat> Dallas. So it's not in the middle of nowhere, but it's, it's, it's about an hour out of, like, the big city area, hour yeah. and a half. Um. Texas is a hot deal. Uh, be, be aware of the, uh, the taxes. That's the thing that will get you in Texas when you're a landlord is the taxes get, you know, taxes can be stupidly expensive. Okay. Um, but this one, I mean, you could sell the whole package to a Texas landlord. Mm -hmm. uh, you could wholesale the whole thing and probably pick up 50, 70,000, okay. maybe more, maybe a hundred. Uh, okay or you could try and take it down yourself, uh, you know, go to one of the big, uh, and there's lenders out there that are doing 100 cents on the dollar financing for this type of package um, out there right now. And you can probably get the whole thing, you can get a loan on the whole thing. What kind of lenders would that be? Just, you oh, they're, general you just have to hard Google money them. ones or? Uh, these are the, some of the large national, um, real estate investor lenders. There's big ones out there. Okay. Um, but you gotta, you gotta move fast because this is a pretty good deal, it looks like. I would, yeah, check I, the, gonna... I would check the taxes to be sure. You gotta okay. be careful, like I said, because <clears throat> in Texas, I mean, I, I've seen taxes on a $20,000 house be $400 a month. Okay. Uh, it's ridiculous. You've gotta, it just depends on the community. You know, okay. and are they paying for all their school district? And I remember Texas doesn't have uh, income tax. They mm -hmm. make it all on property tax. So, um, okay. But yeah, I'm going to try to get it all signed up this afternoon when I call them probably here in two hours or so. And you could probably, um, you know, get it under contract and then, uh, you know, go in the group or, or Vox us. I can get you hooked up with a friend of mine who can get these things probably sold for you quick to another investor. Okay, cool. So you said the main thing for the contract is I'll just take the normal standard contract we use and put all 10 property addresses in there and then put the final number we decide on and then put a clause somewhere that says we can individually close on them and then take it from there. 
Yep. Okay. Cool. Thank good you. Job. I guess this that's all I got one. for now. Yeah. So this is yeah. this is a very good one. Yep. And it came this through the Facebook. You guys week. should all be looking for this kind of stuff out there because this is where you can make a lot of money. Uh, you know, when you add a zero to the end of your paycheck, it really bumps your outlook. You know, you're going to have a smile at the end of each day. So it's it's nice to get the you know hundred thousand dollars of the ten thousand dollar paychecks. Yeah, uh, just thinking out loud here, Jeff and Jared. If you take this thing down yourself, go get a loan for the two thirty or whatever. You could sell off, you know, however many of them, portion of them, or all of them with owner financing, and then sell off those notes that you created to then cash out your underlying hard money loan. And then you still get some cash flow on the back end after that. Right. So you can make big money on the front and monthly cash flow still. Right. Even if you use the private money loan, hard money. Yep. Yeah, you can do it.